So, in the isomerism, we were discussing the optical isomerism. The last class we have completed the optical isomerism in tetral geometry, tetral geometry with monodentate ligands and also tetral geometry with the bidentate ligands. That to be in bidentate ligands in tetral geometry, structurally unsymmetric uh, ligands, what I have given two ligands I have given, one is benzoyl astenato and salicyl aldehyde ato. We have discussed some boron and beryllium complexes with bidentate ligands, tetral complex of beryllium and boron we have discussed. Now, we will see now the coordinates number 6 in octal geometry how this optical isomerism. Coordination number 6 octahedral geometry, octahedral geometry. So, first we take octahedral geometry with monodentate ligands. Octahedral, I am writing like this octahedral with monodentate ligands. Octahedral with monodentate ligands. First uh, type, let us consider types under this. First one. Take Ma four B two. Or you take Ma three B three. Or you take Ma four B two or Ma three B three. Both of these complexes with the monodentate ligands. Either you take cis isomer or the trans, trans isomer. Cis isomer and trans isomer of both of these complexes are found to be symmetric, are found to be symmetric. We can cut into equal halves, symmetric. So, they are obeying all the this symmetry elements, either plane of symmetry, center of symmetry, axis of symmetry. These are symmetric complexes, either you take cis or trans geometries. Therefore, these two models, these two are not. Uh, exhibiting optical isomerism. So, no optical isomerism, no optical isomerism due to symmetric, symmetric geometries because of cis and trans both are found to be symmetric. Therefore, no geometrical isomerism, symmetric geometries. Because these are symmetric, therefore, no optical isomerism. Coming to the second, take now M A to B 2 C 2 you take plus or minus n. Let me give you a real example you take 1 consider C O take a NSD taken twice and uh, C L 2 let me write H 2 taken twice M A 2 B 2 C 2 you consider this is what the C L 2 therefore, plus charge is enough to make it cobalt plus 3 to the complex. Recollect what we have discussed about this particular complex. For this particular complex, 5 geometrical isomers are possible I given, but out of this 5 geometrical isomers, now 3 are isolated I said. Theoretically, 5 geometrical isomers are possible clearly given already. Out of these 5 geometrical isomers, 3 are only isolated I said. Above this particular 5 isomers, the cis isomer is unsymmetric. Cis isomer is unsymmetric. I will write the cis isomer and I will show how it is optically active C. Only cis isomer found to be cis isomer unsymmetric unsymmetric, this can only exhibit optical isomerism, optically active, optically active. Only cis isomer unsymmetric, let me write here instead of writing that one, let me say it is optically active. Optically active, 
optical actor. Let me show how this particular says and uh, how this is optically active. Take CO, octahedral, right. Take this CL and CL cis and uh, aqua, amine. You know how this is actually cis isomer. This is SMR is optically active. Now, we can write one is D isomer you take, the other one L isomer. One is D isomer, the other one is what uh, L isomer. Consider first one as D, next L. See for this theoretically if isomers are possible, one of the cis isomer is what? It is unsymmetric complex, therefore that is optical active. Let me say this is both of this. Let us say one is D isomer, second one is L isomer. D isomer and L isomer. Next model let us take the next one, the second one, next uh, third one you see. M, A, B, C, D, E, F. M, A, B, C, D, E, F. All the six ligands are different. M, A, B, C, D, E, F. Plus or minus N. Take an example, real example. Take platinum. The bromide, chloride, iodide, let me write NO2, take one NS3, NS3 and P1. This is the complex. Recall it in geometrical isomerism also, I given this particular complex. I said for this uh, 15 geometrical isomers are possible, I said, out of which 12 or 6 isomers and uh, 3 or trans isomers is 2 or 6, 3 or trans isomers. But all these particular 15 geometrical isomers, 15 geometrical isomers, those geometrical isomers are unsymmetric because no two ligands are identical, then this particular complex cannot be cut into equal halves under any, any angle you take, then this particular complex, no two ligands are actually identical, all are different from each other. Therefore, you cannot cut into equal half. Definitely, this particular complex, complex all the 15 geometrical isomers, whatever you say, those are unsymmetric complexes. Once unsymmetric complex is there, that will be active. Therefore, 15 geometrical isomers are possible, you said. See, I am writing 15 geometrical isomers. Geometrical isomers. Geometrical isomers. All are unsymmetric. Fifteen geometrical isomers unsymmetric. So all are optically active. All are optically active. Say once fifteen geometrical isomers all are optically active means total number of optical isomers coming to be thirty. Fifteen or D, fifteen or water. L. So, all are optically active that is 30 optical isomers are possible, 30 optical isomers, 30 optical isomers. So, 15 geometrical isomers all are unsymmetric and all are optically active 30 optical isomers. So, total number of optical isomers possible for this particular is what uh, you can say 30 optical isomers. Now, this is under octahedral geometry, 
only with the monodentate ligands. Let us see next bidentate and monodentate ligands. Bidentate and uh, monodentate ligands. So, octahedral with bidentate and monodentate. Bidentate and uh, monodentate. Types under this you take. Bidentate and monodentate, M A A taken by B2. BC. M A A B2 C2. plus or minus here. Next, instead of taking AA symmetric, you can also take unsymmetric bidentate. Yes, M, AB taken twice, B2 plus or minus N, M, AB taken twice, BC plus or minus. So, one thing is important here in all these particular complexes only cis isomers are optically active but not trans. Only cis isomers are optically active but not trans. Let us write that particular point here now. Only cis isomers are optically active Only cis isomers are optically active, but not trans. In all these cases, trans is not optically active, only cis is optically active. Let us take one by one how they are exhibiting optical isomerism. Take the first model MAAB2. Let me write this MAAB2 CO. Take E and taken twice C L two plus C L two plus. Let us write only cis isomer C O One ethylene amine, second one say this size what? Say this size D isomer D isomer. So this is optically active mirror plane input and take this uh, next uh, L isomer for this. So, D isomer and L isomer, this cis isomer is optical active. I said trans is not optical active. Let us write a trans structure and let us see how it is optically not active, optically inactive. See, I am writing a trans for this. C 
serials here I am keeping in a transposition. This is what optically in act 2, this is what trans, but this is what meso we can take. Meso not optically active. Meso not optically active. You are getting a mirror plane, check it, then you are getting what? Uh, a superimposable, superimposable mirror image you are getting, superimposable mirror image, mirror image, therefore that is optically inactive, meso compound is Similarly, you can also show for MEA taken twice BC, it is more or less same instead of chlorine and chlorine, we can write CL and BR, we can show for CC that, that is optical active and terms that is what are not optical active, let me show that one. MEA taken twice B2, now MEA taken twice BC. C B C C L B R I write C L B R. Now let me write here CIS only again C L B R. Yes, C L B R. So this is what color complex D you consider, and that is what L. And similarly, if you write for the trans, trans is again optically inactive, let us say, optically inactive Br. So, like this MAA taken twice B2 and again BC. Next, let us take MAA B2C2. And first only say MAA B2C2. plus or minus n, let me write CO, EN you take, EN, let me say H2O twice Cl2, right. This is B2C2 type, let us write uh, one cis complex for this. The monodentic ligand I keep in cis positions, this particular take this as D I sum up. So put the mirror plane, then C O. D isomer, L isomer, like this. One is M, A A taken by B2, next B C we are taken, M A A, then A2, B2 C2, M A A, B2 C2. All these cis isomers are optically active, I have shown all the three models. Next, let us see. In some cases, octal geometry may carry two different bidentic ligands, two different bidentates and monodentates. Let us see the next two different bidentates and monodentates. So, two different bidentate and monodentate ligands. Monodentate 
more identity layers. This model, let me write one more way. The optically a optically active complex with optically active ligand. A optically active complex with optically active ligand. I am writing C. Optically active complex with optically active complex with optical active ligand. Optical active complex with optical active ligand. Look here. What is said? Two different binding dates. Take one is AA, two different binding dates, and let us write C2 plus. In this CO, one I write PN, one I write TN, PN and TN I am writing. Then Cl2 plus. See optical active complex to optical active ligand. So this particular PN is optical active ligand. How you say this is optical active ligand? Let us check it. The structure of PN. You know. C H three. One two diamino propane. One two diamino propane. This is C. This is carrying what asymmetric center. This particular ligand itself optical active. And the complex is also found to be optical active. So, optical active complex with optical active ligand. This is important to remember. For this, we write again optical isomers. Take the cis. Let us write one is P N and T N C H two C H C H three. This is P N. One is T N. Take this as what a D isomer. D isomer. Right next to uh, mirror image of this L isomer, same complex. C H two, C H two, and N H two. Also, say one is D, the other one will be L. C. So, octal geometry with the monoidentity be completed. Octal geometry with the two different, with the bidentate and monoidentates, and with two different bidentates and monoidentates. In that, we are taking it as what a optical active complex, which is carrying. Optical active ligand and uh, optically active complex. Optically active complex with the uh, optical active ligand this is the best example under this. As we are taken, P N is what a optical active ligand as it is carrying what a symmetric center. The ligand is optical active, but overall complex is also optically active. Next we see octal geometry with only bidentate ligands. With only bidentate ligands. But all these uh, structures you have to practice once or twice. Otherwise, you cannot uh, directly put in the examination wherever required. But once or twice, you have to practice on the paper all these different uh, models, whatever you give. Octahedral with only bidentate. Octahedral with only 
only by intelligence. Under this, let us write the first what types. Take this. M A A taken thrice. Either it may be symmetric or unsymmetric. By intelligent, it makes no difference. All are found to be optically active. Now, M A A taken thrice. M A A taken twice. B B two different also you take two different by intelligence. Plus or minus n. Next, it may be unsymmetric by intelligence. Let me write M A B taken twice. M A B taken thrice to take thrice. Next, M A B taken to twice B B. So octal geometry with only bi identity again, so there may be all same type of bi identities, or all different types of bi identities. Two different types of bi identities, or all are identical bi identities. All are found to be optically active. All are optically active. Optically active. Let's take this particular first one. M A A taken thrice. Next shape you take and thrice. Let's see what is the real example under this. Now you take C O E N taken thrice. You take plus or minus n. Plus or minus n. Let's write this particular model. How it is optical act to octahedral. C H two, C H two, N H two. Similarly, one more. D I S M R. Take the L I S M R. For the same mirror image, right? So one you are saying D, the other mirror image you can say L, L isomer. One D isomer, the other is what a L isomer. All the same by intelligence. Let's take two different by intelligence. Next M A E taken twice, B B you take. Next one, your first model only take M A E. Taken twice, B B. Two different ones. What example you can write? Take E and taken twice, C two O four take. Plus. See oxalate. For oxalate, I given one, uh, two, or ethylene diamines. Oxalate or ligand. Then two ethylene diamines. One, the second one.
take this as the d isomer next mirror image right for this that will be trans trans isomer this is what uh, d and again what uh, that is l sorry d isomer the mirror image is l isomer one is d the other is l take one is d the other is what now l isomer one is d isomer l isomer so all are identical bidentates at two different uh, bidentates so all these complex are found in what uh, optically active next octal geometry with the uh, exodentate ligand we take with e d t e Octal geometry with exodentate ligand also found to be optically active. The next one. Type two. Let us consider this as type two. Right. Octahedral geometry. It's only binary that we have taken. Right octal geometry with hexodentate ligand. We write with hexodentate. Hexodentate ligand. Under this octal with hexodentate ligand. Take M E D T A. See M E D T A is optical active. Take C O E D T A. C O E D T A is what uh, optical active. How it is optical active? Let us put the diagram and see D and uh, L isomers for this. Look here. It is a little typical to draw, but you have to practice this particular. It is easily named tetrastato. Four estate groups. C double bond O O. Next one. C H two. C double bond O O. See this is. You can consider this as what? Uh, D I sum up. Say D isomer. Come on, write the mirror image for this. L isomer. For the same mirror image, right? That will be representing. L isomer. Carefully, how to write this particular diagram, and you have to practice well. C H two C double bond O O. 
सी एच टू सी डबल वन वो नेक्स्ट सी एच टू सी डबल वन वो वेरी डी एस एम आर द अदर वन इज एल आईसमर डी एस एम आर एंड एल आईसम सी एम मीडिट की सी ओ इट इज वट ऑप्टिकली एक्टिव This is the optical isomer in uh, different uh, complexes with monodentate we have taken with a uh, bidentate and monodentate with two different bidentates and again only bidentate ligands that to be all same type of bidentates two different types of bidentates and this particular a uh, complex with a uh, excedentate edit ligand also exhibiting uh, like this uh, isomerism so this is the different types of isomerisms from the beginning structural isomerism stereo isomerism different types were taken all this next let us discuss stability constants stability constants of the complex compounds we will discuss stability constants stability constants stability constants see most of the complex compounds are found to be stable then only you take a complex compound then only it is found to be stable still even though in aqueous solution it ionized into a smaller extent smaller extent you take a complex i am writing on the board ag ns3 taken twice cr you take this once you are putting in aqueous solvent like water i need just a smaller extent to what it is metal cation i need to produce what a metal cation and uh, amine ligands amine ligands let me write instead of writing this particular chloride let me write uh, this particular in a brief easy way let me make it like this as in acid twice plus this i need in the aqueous solution like this Let us write equilibrium constant for this particular equilibrium equation. Now, Ag plus Ns square. Then it is Ag Ns three taken twice plus. This is the equilibrium constant. What is particular k equal to Ag plus Ns3 square Ag Ns3 twice plus. This k value is found to be experimentally. It is 1.6 into 10 to the power of minus 8, very less value. This particular k we can consider what equilibrium constant. For our convenience sake, instead of saying this particular k is equilibrium constant, let us make it dissociation constant. Yes, equilibrium constant it may be, but For our discussion sake, let us consider this particular case dissociation constant. The dissociation constant value, how much it is found? One point six nine to power of minus eight. It is what? It is very very lower value. One point six nine to power of minus eight. It is what lower value means? What do you understand? The dissociation constant is very less. You are saying, or dissociation constant is less? Dissociation is less. Yes, a particular complex is actually dissociating very less. Out of them, lacks of this particular complex ions only 10 or 20 are ionizing. What do you understand by this? Out of lacks of complex compounds, only 10 or 20 are actually ionizing. Means you can easily say the most stable complex. Following, K is the equilibrium constant for our discussion. Let us consider K is the dissociation constant. Its value is expressly found to be 8 is what a 1.6 to the power of a minus 8. It is very less value. Means That particular complex undergoing very less dissociation. Less dissociation means the complex is more stable. Therefore, it undergoing very very less dissociation. Therefore, that particular complex is more stable. Now, the stability constant we can define in different ways. Let me say first definition: stability constant. Stability constant definition: say stability constant. Stability constant. 
stability constant is inversely proportional to dissociation constant to C. What is said? Dissociation constant is very less, stability is more. So, stability constant is inversely proportional to dissociation constant. Next, it is also a measure of metal like and bond strength. Metal like and bond strength you take. Metal like and bond strength is very high, stability constant is very high. It also gives a information about strength of the bond between metal and the ligand. So, bond strength. Bond strength. Greater the metal to ligand bond strength, greater the metal to ligand bond strength, greater will be the stability. Next, it is also a method of metal ligand bond formation. Rate of formation of the complex, once rate of formation of the complex is more, take NL, let us take N. Rate of formation of the complex is more, that particular complex is also found to be stable. So, stability constant, inversely proportional dissociation constant, it gives information about metal like and bond strength and also gives information about rate of formation of a complex. If the rate of formation of the complex is more, stability is more, rate of formation of the complex is less, stability is less, either the way we can define this stability constant. See now let us discuss factors influencing stability constant. Factors influencing stability constants, right. Factors influencing stability constants. Factors influencing stability constants. Mainly two factors we come across. First one, take nature of the metal cation. Here let me write one. Nature of the metal cation. Nature of the metal cation. Second one, nature of the ligand. Nature of the ligand. One is nature of the metal cation. Second one is nature of the ligand. Under these two factors, first let us have a discussion about how nature of the metal influencing stability of a complex. Stability of a complex. First one let us take nature of the metal cation. Under this, let us take first size and charge over the metal ion. Size and charge over the metal ion. Size and charge over the metal ion, the first one. Next, electronegativity of the metal ion. First one is size and charge over the metal ion. Second one, electronegativity of the metal ion. Third one, EAN of the complex, EAN. Fourth one, electronic configuration electronic configuration. Size and charge of the metal ion, electron negativity, EAN and uh, electronic uh, configuration. This is the first one size and charge. Remember, a metal cation is smaller size. A metal cation with a smaller size possesses greater charge density, then it will show greater electrostatic force over the ligand, strength of the bond will be high. Therefore, a metal cation with a smaller size possesses greater charge density produce highly stable complex. See how, what I said a metal cation with smaller size, consider Fe plus 2 and Fe plus 3 you take. Yes, you can easily say Fe plus 3 is what smaller in comparison to Fe plus 3. Let me write this is what uh, this much bigger and this is what little smaller. And moreover it is carrying what plus 2 charge? Yes, the charge density is what uh, thin around it. Charge density is what uh, thin around it or the density is thin. But here Fe plus 3 is what uh, smaller in size possessing greater charge density 
it is the plus charge density is very high plus charge density around it is what uh, thick for the greater the charge density it can easily show stronger electrostatic force on the negative ligand or any ligand then strength of the bond will be high therefore a smaller cation possesses greater charge density it can show greater electrostatic force on the ligand strength of the bond will be high therefore a metal cation with smaller size possesses greater charge density produce highly stable complex second one electronegativity what is electronegativity the tendency to attract the donated pair of electron or the tendency to attract the bonded pair of electron towards itself a more electronegative metal ion is there then it is easily accepting the donated pair of electron from the ligand once it is easily accepting the strength of the easily accepting the bond will be easily formed and once the bond is easily formed then we can say the strength of the bond will be high therefore a more electronegative a more electronegative metal ion produce more stable complex suppose you take metal the greater electronegativity easily accepts a donated pair of electron and uh, strength of the bond will be high strength of the bond will be high therefore it will be more stable greater the electronegativity of the metal cation that can produce highly stable complex coming to next uh, ean recollect again sigwick theory what we have discussed uh, in the other classes we are already completed that ean which are the complex obeying ean obeying ean means the complex which is having ean either 36 54 or 86 36 54 or 86 that particular complex are found to be more stable so the complex is obeying ean which is having ean either 36 you take or 54 you take or 86 you take such complex are found to be more stable next electronic configuration take here we have to discuss electronic configuration now generally inner orbital complexes are more stable than outer orbital complexes inner orbital complex are more stable than outer orbital complexes why inner is more stable and outer less stable let us see we have discussed many complex inner and outer under applications of official bill theory now you know well now consider 3d series suppose 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 cells are written. Now, once inner complex is we are talking about 3D element to take, example we are taking 3D element, we are discussing this particular concept. Now, if you consider inner orbital complex, 3D orbital is involving. For 3D orbital involving, clearly you are observing the bonded pair of electron will be, this is the ligand, the bonded pair of electron will be near to the nucleus of the metal ion bonded pair of electron is near to the nucleus of the metal ion more attraction force over the bonded pair more attraction force over the bonded pair and strength of the bond will be high strength of the bond will be high therefore a inner orbital complex producing more stable complex consider the outer orbital complex yes outer orbital complex involving 4d orbital you can clearly observing it is little away so this particular 4d orbital is uh, involving the bonded pair of electron will be away from the nucleus of the metal ion and uh, less attraction force over the bonded pair. Less attraction force over the bonded pair, then strength of the bond will be less. Therefore, the outer orbital complex are found to be less stable. So, inner orbital complex are more stable, outer orbital complex are but uh, less stable. This is the concept uh, about uh, the influence, the stability constants influenced by the nature of the metal ion these are the factors next let us see the stability constant which are influenced by ligand nature next we take a uh, nature of the ligand nature of the ligand under nature of the ligand first one under this size and charge over the ligand size and charge Size and charge over the ligand. Field strength of the ligand. Field strength. Field 
field strength, pi accepting nature, pi accepting. Many are there. Let us discuss these two factors under this nature of the ligand. Size and charge of the ligand. A ligand with smaller size take fluorodion, take iridium. A ligand with smaller size possess again greater charge density. Once charge density is more, it can show greater electrostatic force on the metal cation, and uh, strength of the bond will be high. Therefore, produce highly stable complex. See, smaller fluorodion. Bigger iridion tick. It is smaller, then the negative charge density will be very thick. And here the negative charge density will be thin. Negative charge density will be thin. This is what thin negative charge density. Then it can show great electrostatic force, great electrostatic force on the metal cation, great electrostatic force on the metal cation, and the strength of the bond will be high. Once you talk about only halide complexes, order of stability of halide complexes, yes, the stability of fluoride complex is more stable than chloride, chloride is more stable than bromide, bromide is more stable than iodide. This is the order of stability of the halide complexes. Coming to field strength and pi accepting nature, field strength and uh, pi accepting nature. Recall it again we have discussed uh, the spectrochemical series, a strong field ligand and a weak field ligand we have classified. A strong field ligand is actually causing greater splitting of d orbitals and a weaker weak field ligand is causing lesser splitting of d orbitals. Whenever a strong field ligand is causing greater splitting, electrons are getting paid to the lower end of the level giving rise to a complex with a greater CFSC value greater CFSE, greater crystal field stabilization energy, that particular complex is found to be more stable. Once d order splitting is more, yes, that results in a highly stable comb. Once d order splitting is less, that will be what uh, giving rise to less stable complex. See what, what I said a strong field ligand produce more stable complex than a weak field because greater splitting of d order. A strong field is causing what uh, greater splitting of d orbitals, a weak field is causing lesser splitting of d orbital. Consider a d6 system you take, right. All that this is what you see t to z, this is say easy, this is easy again, this is t to z, t to z and easy you take. Now, all the 6 electrons are entering into lower end level, then you talk about the CFAC of this particular complex that produces a complex highest CFSC minus 2.4 or minus 24 you take. Minus 24 dq of CFSC value it is gaining, therefore that particular complex is found to be highly stable. Next, pi accepting nature, recall it in the classification of ligands, I have given pi accepting ligands. Some of the ligands are actually capable of forming double bonds with the metal ion. First they are donating a pair forming sigma and again accepting a pair forming a pi. So, some of the ligands are actually capable of forming a double bond with the metal ion. Double bond you can say double bond strength is more than single bond strength. Therefore, wherever we come across this particular pi accept ligand, what are the pi accept ligands? Some of the examples carbonyl, nitrosyl, cyano, triphenyl, pospane, bipi, such ligands are there. They are forming a double bond with the metal ion and such complex also found to be highly stable. What are the ligand? CO, carbonyl, nitrosolutic and cyano, triphenyl, pospine, etc. Wherever this particular pi acceptance ligands are there, they are forming double bond with the metal ion, double bond. One is sigma, one is what uh, pi. Such complex are found to be highly stable because double bond strength is more than single bond strength. Easy concept about this particular nature of the ligands. First one is size and charge, second one is what uh, field strength and uh, pi accepting nature. Next uh, third one we discuss Tillet effect. Under ligands Tillet effect.
keylet effect to take. Let me write one more. Keylet ring size. Keylet ring size. Keylet ring size. Keylet effect. Generally, wherever keylet ligand or the polydentate ligands are there, that particular complex found to be highly stable. This higher stability in comparison to the complex carrying monodentate ligands, that particular higher stability we call what keylet effect. The complex with keylet ligands is found to be abnormally more stable in compared to the complex which is carrying monodentate ligand. That higher stability we call it as what a keylet effect. Why a polydentate ligand or a keylet ligand is producing a highly stable complex? See, it may be due to formation of rings around the metal ion. Formation of rings around the metal ion. Rings around the metal ion. What happens by forming the rings? Stability is increasing, I said. Next one, you see. Rings around the metal ion it may be due to formation of rings around the metal ion. Second one, metal to ligand, all the bonds may not be broken simultaneously. May not be broken simultaneously. Now, suppose this particular complex, you are heating to 100 degree centigrade. You consider, for example, I mean. if one of the bond is breaking, with other bond still it is intact. So, out of two bonds. One bond is breaking, other bond is intact. Suppose you are decreasing the temperature to 100 degrees to lower the temperature to 50 degree. Then the broken bond will reform and we are getting the complex. That means a polydentate ligand is not linked to metal ion with single atom, many donor atoms of all may not split simultaneously. That is also maybe the reason for the higher stability. In addition to this particular two reasons, one, one uh, what I said, rings formation. Second one, all the bonds between the metal and the ligand may not split simultaneously. Third one, what you can consider now, see third one, third reason is a suitable reason you can consider why keylet complex are generally found to be more stable. Whenever a complex with the keylet ligands is produced, see nickel H2O taken 6, a plus 2 complex. This is what I complex with monodentate ligand. This is forming a complex with a, a bidentate ligand you take, bidentate ligand ethylene diamine you take, bidentate ligand. Then in the formation of, in the direction of formation of the complex, whenever a complex with a chelate ligand is produced, Whenever a complex with keylet ligand is produced, in the direction of formation of the complex, there will be increase in entropy. There will be increase in entropy. Increase in entropy. Delta S is increasing here. There will be increase in entropy. Now, either you say increase in entropy, you say, or whenever a complex with the keylet ligand is produced, the direction of the form of the complex will be the direction of the form of the complex will be exothermic reaction. Yes, any product uh, which is produced by exothermic process that will be found to be highly stable. So, whenever a complex with chelate ligands is produced, the direction of the form of the complex, direction of the formation of the complex, there will be increase in entropy or you say the direction of form of the complex, that particular reaction is found to be exothermic. Exothermic product is highly stable. Therefore, in compared to this particular complex, this chelate complex is going to be more stable. Coming to the next, uh, chelate ring size. Chelate ring size. Now, chelate ring size generally you take, in general, a 5 membered chelate ring is less stable than a 5 membered chelate ring is more stable. A 5 membered chelate ring is more stable than 6 membered chelate ring, provided the chelate rings are saturated. Chelate rings are saturated. Now, suppose you are taking M En complex to take, M ethylene diamine. M 
m e n complex. Then m t n complex I am writing look here t n t n trimethylene diamine complex. M E N complex is more stable than what uh, M T N complex, and uh, this is five member ring. That is six member ring. This is the what order of stability. Next, once you talk about kilo ring size under here, five member is more stable than six member, provided both the rings are saturated. So this is what order of stability. Order of stability. We will talk about a six-membered kilet ring. A six-membered kilet ring take. A six-membered kilet ring is found to be more stable, provided six-membered kilet ring is a resonance hybrid, unsaturated. So I am writing M A C A C. M A C A C resonance. Let us see. M A C A C resonance. See, I am writing M A C S now. Acetyl acetate complex. Plus or minus n. See this particular A C S ring. You are clearly observing on the board. There are double bonds. There is a possibility of resonance like this. See next resonance structure. Single bond, double bond, C H, C, double bond, right? Double bond, naked coordinate coordinate bond. Minus n, plus or minus n. And it is what C is. See, this is five member ring, more stable than six member, provided both the rings are saturated. But what I said, a six member ring is more stable than five member ring, provided the six member ring is unsaturated and a resonance hybrid. If six member ring is unsaturated resonance hybrid, then that particular six member complex, six member ring is more stable than five member ring. Therefore, would compare. M E N and M T N. M E N is more stable. M E N is more stable. We compare M E N and M A C A C complex. M A C A C complex is more stable than M methylene diamine. M A C A C complex is more stable than M methylene diamine. So we can write like this: M A C A C A C A C complex is more stable than M E N according to this particular concept. This is what a uh, ring size. Next, uh, number of kilit rings. Number of kilit rings. Next concept under the same nature of the ligand. Number of kilit rings. Number of kilit rings. One is the nature of the ligand under size and charge. Next, the field strength uh, by axial nature and kilit effect. Ring size and number of kilit rings. Let us take this is what uh, fifth. I hope number of kilit rings. Fifth uh, effect. Now suppose any one kilit com ligand, any one kilit ligand which is capable of forming more number of kilit rings, that particular complex is found to be highly stable. What I am saying, a kilit ligand which is capable of forming more number of kilit rings, that is found to be more stable. Let me give now. Suppose you are talking about Cu H two were taken four times to take plus two. Cu H two were four times instead of H two were. Let us write all same type. N S three. Let me give. This is good. Cu N S three taken four times. Next, Cu E N taken twice. C U E N taken twice plus two, and uh, 
see you diene you write diene taken twice plus 2 and uh, see you try in you write see you try in plus 2 see you try in plus 2 it see what is the main complex ethylene amine complex diene and uh, try in written order of stability you talk about this is less stable than this this is less stable than this this is less stable than this so this is what you say order of stability order of stability next why you are writing this particular order of stability how can you say let us see number of rings formed by single chelate ligand let us see number of number of chelate rings number of chelate rings by number of chelate rings by single chelate ligand single single chelate ligand so it is amine ligand and the monodentate no ring but you talk about ethylene amine two donor atoms are there it can form only one ring two donor atoms one ring see number of rings by a chelate ligand equal to number of donor atoms minus 1 number of chelate rings by a chelate ligand equal to number of donor atoms minus 1 so ethylene amine two donor atoms it can form only one ring so it is it, it can form only one ring and diene diene how many donor atoms three three minus 1 two rings therefore it is what uh, Two rings. How many two atoms are there in triene? Four. Four minus one. We can say this word. Uh, it is forming three rings. Like this. More the number of rings, more the stability is there. How can you understand this? This is forming no ring. Means what? Only it is linked to the metal ion by single bond. Only one bond is there. To break this particular one bond between the metal and ligand, requiring less amount of energy. Here two rings. This particular ethylene amine linked by two donor atoms are two bonds. then breaking of this particular two bonds is requiring more amount of energy coming to diene diene is linked by three bonds diene is linked by three bonds breaking of three bonds is requiring more amount of energy in the case of triene diene is three bonds and only single triene you take it is linked to what this particular metal ion by four donor atoms four bonds are there to break this particular four bonds requiring more amount of energy so number of donor atoms linked to the metal is increasing number of rings are increasing and to break that particular ligand from the metal requiring more amount of energy therefore this particular order of stability greater the number of rings formed by a single chelate ligand that is forming highly stable complex order of stability and number of rings by single ligand this is what uh, the stability constants influenced by the nature of the ligands nature of the ligands right